Because I used one with Raj, and I think so. But I was the one he had I love this particular scripture about the ten lepers. And uh, I think there's a lot of lessons that we can uh, actually learn about being thankful. Jesus was on his journey to Jerusalem, uh, but certain Samaritans did not allow free passage into their territory, so Jesus had to go a different route. And even though Jesus went to a different route, he always found ministry. That's one thing about Jesus. I mean, they were lots of times he had to uh, have different routes. Even uh, Mary and Joseph had to be routed different because of King Herod. So uh, I guess the family was familiar with taking different routes for their own safety, as well as the apostles. Uh, they sometimes had to go different ways because people were violent back then. Uh, so he went a different way. And on his different way, he met ten lepers. And we identify with these ten that, uh, in a way, we're lepers. We need Jesus for spiritual cleansing as well. So if we can identify with these ten lepers that we, too, need to be clean by the blood of Jesus Christ, which we sang about in our song today. Let's look at this very familiar scripture and see what we can learn about the ten lepers dealing with our own thankfulness. Point number one, the ten lepers kept their distance from Jesus and played by the leper laws. The lepers stood at a distance and with their loud voices they played by the rules. If you want to look up uh, Leviticus 13, 45, you will find out what the leper laws were. Let me read that scripture to you to find out. I know you're dying to know what the leper laws was. Lepers had to identify themselves by wearing torn clothes, covering their lower parts of their faces, and they had to cry out, unclean, unclean. Apparently, nine Jews and one Samaritan were brought together by the same affliction. And uh, that terrible disease was called leprosy. I often identify leprosy with cancer. That seems to be so widespread in America today and how we fear that cancer word as well. They obeyed the laws of the leper. Could you imagine having a disease in which you had to wear torn clothes and cover your mouth, your lower part of your mouth, and, and yell, unclean, unclean, unclean. And then also to actually live in a leper colony, that would be so terrible. But how many men today are unclean? Today because they simply have not been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. In fact, it's just the opposite in our society today. In our society, there are many people that do not have to yell unclean, unclean, because what? We glorify sin in our today's society. In fact, it's just the opposite. If we stand up for Jesus, we feel that we're not accepted. How sad that so many people keep distance from Jesus and are proud that they are unclean. In today's text, the lepers didn't expect Jesus to come to them and heal them of their physical disease. What did they do? It says in the scripture, they just cried for mercy. They had no idea that Jesus was going to heal them. But always Jesus comes to all people, no matter if they are Jews or Samaritans or Unclean or clean, Jesus comes to us, to us all, seeking that we'll ask Him to be our Lord and Savior. Luke 19, 10, for Jesus came to seek and to save all that was lost. Point number two, we live by faith in Jesus or we remain unclean. The lepers cried to Jesus. 
They requested mercy, not healing. They were given the opportunity to exercise their faith. Would they take it? I find it interesting that one out of ten in this particular passage of scripture, only one came back to heal, to for healing. I find it interesting that probably that's the way it is today. About one in ten people are thankful people unto God. The Jews and the Samaritans, and the one that came back for healing was a Samaritan. And the Samaritans and the Jews did not get along at all. A um, number of reasons for that. The Jews and the Samaritans were against each other from 721 B.C. B.C. sergeant of Assyria destroyed Samaria. The Samarian people, in the eyes of many Jews, were called half-breeds. They were, had a mixed religion. They feared Jehovah, but they also served other gods, and then they intermarried with other pagan men and women. So the Jews did not think too highly of the Samaritans. Even in Jesus' day, the, um, the Samaritan and the Jews were at war with one another. But Jesus, on many occasions, reached out to the Samaritans. As you look at Jesus' healing ministry, he cared for all people, and he cared for the Samaritans as well. So you see how ironic it was that the one that came back to thank him was a Samaritan. In Luke 17, 17, we have the verse that makes this event so meaningful. And Jesus said, we're not, I did not, we're ten cleansed, but where are the other nine? We find that in verse 17. Should this not be the words of all that are cleansed? Thank you, Jesus. That should have been the reply, and all of them should have came back to thank Jesus. Can you imagine having leprosy and then being cleansed by Jesus? I love the story of Mark Tidd of Webster, New York, describes an experience in his college days. Back in his college days, there was an old man that knocked on his back door, um, the house that he was renting, Opening the door, a few inches, they saw this man with glassy eyes and a furrowed face, which glistened with silver stubble. He uh, clutched a wicker basket holding a few unappealing vegetables. He bid them good morning and asked if they were willing to buy some of the vegetables. The renters were so uneasy, they made a quick purchase to alleviate pity and fear. To the renter's chagrin, though, the old man came back the next week, introducing himself as Mr. Roth, a man who lived in the shack down the road. As the renter fears subside, they got close enough to realize that it wasn't alcohol, which they thought was the reason that his eyes were all glassy, it was that he had cataracts on his eyes. On sub sub subsequent visits, he would shuffle by wearing two mismatched shoes. Then one day he pulled out his harmonica with glazed eyes and set his face on future glory as he puffed out gospel tunes on his harmonica singing about Jesus. And I thought that was so neat that here he was, still selling vegetables, but he had a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and playing gospel songs in his harmonica. One visit he explained that the Lord was good to him, and as he came out of his shack, he noticed that he found a bag full of clothes and uh, shoes. And the, the renters said to him, well, this is wonderful. We're so happy for you that you've got shoes and clothes. The man replied, yes. And just yesterday, I met some people that could really use them. I can't help but think that this kind of an old beggar type man, man Mr. Roth, was one that would have come back to Jesus to say, 
thank you. Thirdly of all, we must obey Christ's commands. I think we can learn that from this particular passage of Scripture. We must obey Christ's commands. The lepers did their part of Jesus' command. It says in the Scriptures that they had to go to the priest to be healed. Their action was out of obedience. They went to the priests and they were all healed. They fulfilled Leviticus 14.2. This shall be the lawful leper in the day of cleansing. It shall be brought unto the priest. So they were following again Leviticus' old law of going to the priest to be healed. By going to the priest, Jesus healed them. But still, there was a problem. Nine of them forgot to go back to Jesus and to thank him. How sad in today's society that we might go to church, we might hear sermons on prayer, we might hear sermons on tithing, we might hear sermons on servanthood, but it doesn't do us any good if we hear all of this and do not fulfill what we have heard through the scriptures. It's one thing to say you're thankful, but it's another thing to have actions prove that you're truly thankful. Thankful. I always like the bumper sticker on the, the back of a, uh, well, it was a little sign on the back of the car. You've heard, seen the bumper st sticker, honk if you love Jesus. Well, they put on their bumper sticker, tithe if you love Jesus. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute. You know, we, we say that we can uh, be thankful, but if we really serve the Lord and do what he says, that is showing that we are truly thankful. Is there anything sadder in your home, in your business, and in your life when you see that people are completely unthankful for anything that they get or have? And you've met people like that that are always complaining, never thankful about anything, just complain, complain, complain. And that's sad when you meet people like that that uh, are very unthankful people. I always like this little song, and we have some kids here that maybe they've heard this song before. There are two little magic words that can open any door with ease. One little word is thanks, and the other word is please, okay? I like that. So simple, but so important. How many have heard that song? I think you've heard that song, haven't you? I, I can uh, identify with that. Uh, my mother would... Uh, Somebody would give me something as a child, and my mom would say, what do you say? <laughs> and I learned real quickly that you should say, thank you. Have you ever noticed that uh, when you say thank you, that the other people smile? Have you ever noticed that? I've never met too many people say, well, after you said thank you, after they've given you something, if they get mad. They always smile when you say thank you. I know that Jesus smiled when the one leper Samaritan came back to thank him for his healing. But I can't help but think that Jesus did not smile and was very saddened by the other nine that did not come back to say thank you. <coughs> one can ask the theological question, were the other nine followers of Jesus? I say no. Because you can't be a follower of Jesus and be ungrateful and thankless. Again, every prayer uttered contains the attitude of thanksgiving. I looked up in our, my concordance of how many times thank you or derivative of thanks is in the Bible. I found 143. But then also looked at the Lord's Prayer. Even though it doesn't mention the word thankful or thanksgiving, it does say thank you all through that particular Lord's Prayer. Jesus was thankful for God his Father. He was thankful that his name, God, would be hallowed. He was thankful for God's divine will. He was also thankful to God for providing him daily bread. And also for the great fact that the Lord would forgive his sins and would also demand him to forgive others as well. We are thankful that uh, God, Jesus was thankful that God was the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. What a model prayer of thanksgiving. <coughs> Conclusion. One letter came back and glorified Jesus. What's the significance of this scripture?
picture, very simple. The man was healed. He was thankful for it. He came back to thank Jesus. And Jesus was pleased, so pleased with that leper that he came back to say thank you. I think we need to do the very same thing. In every prayer that we utter, there should be a part of that prayer that says thank you, Jesus. We indeed have a lot to be thankful for. But I run that many Samaritans had closed the door to Jesus and their passage even through their own land. The alternate route gave Jesus an opportunity for a door of healing. The unclean had met the ultimate clean. The one Samaritan rejoiced and praised Jesus. The spirit of gratitude filled his life, and our goal should be an attitude of gratitude to Jesus. In closing, there was a group of students who planned an evangelistic meeting. It was a university students, and they got a tent, and they got a great speaker, and they had a revival, kind of a tent meeting, an old-fashioned tent meeting, uh, revival at the university campus. They heard old-fashioned preaching and gospel singing at that revival. But during the week, a campus cleaning lady was robbed of cash, uh, of, her, uh, of her cash paycheck while walking home from the university. She returned to her cleaning job on the next day broken heart because she had no money, no food, no money for rent. Unknown to her, some of the students heard of her plight and took up a special offering at the revival meeting. The next day, a student representative went to her and said, Did you find your purse that the people had stolen? She replied that she had not and didn't know what she was going to do. She only prayed that somehow God would help. Well, that very student reached out of his pocket, gave her a lot of coins and a lot of dollar bills, and all of those added up to even more than what the robber had stolen. What was her response? She went to her knees, grabbed this representative who gave the money to his hand and cried out, thank God, thank God. She had uh, been like the Samaritan leper. She was so, so thankful that God had understood and given her money to help her out, pay for food, her housing, and uh, the daily things that she needed. Again. Jesus asked, where are the other nine? And I can't help but think that as we look at this passage of scripture, that's exactly what the leper do. Look at verse 16. When he was cleansed, he, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, for he was a Samaritan. We have a lot to be thankful for. Every Sunday we come and take Communion. And it's our way of saying thanks. Thanks, Lord, for dying on the cross for every one of our sins. For taking your blood and, and just cleansing us and making us pure in your sight. Not that we are perfect, but we have been cleaned, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Should we not also say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for dying on the cross that we have salvation that we don't deserve. Let's pray.